easily led. Welcome to Easily Led, the podcast that squeezes miniature war gaming juices in between your ears. I'm Johnny from Johnny Watson Gaming, and as always, I am joined with James, aka Scruffy Crow. James, how are we doing? All good, all good. Uh, good to be recording again. Yeah. Excited. Yeah, so n- number three. So, so three. Really, really cracking on with these hat trick podcasts. Fantastic. Yeah. I'm loving it. Um, so, James, go on in. Just give us a rundown of what we got today and we'll get on. All right. Um, as ever, we're going to start off with some sort of news type stuff and I'll let you guys know how Oathmark Weekend was or Oathmark Day. Um, we then are going to be talking this episode. The, the episode title will be Painting by Numbers versus Rule of Call. Cool. So, we're going to be talking about armies painted like the box art versus sort of concepts, player concepts and themed armies um, and the sort of good and bad points of all of those uh, should be quite interesting, a bit different in the last couple of weeks. And this actually came, this actually came from uh, someone from your uh, Discord, this idea. Yeah, so this was raised uh, so on the Scruffy Crow Discord server. Uh, Adventurer Mr H uh, suggested this as a topic. I thought actually that was, was a pretty uh, good idea. Um, yeah, so and then we'll uh, yeah, end up with a recommendation of the week as normal. So yeah, uh, that's the plan. As always. So pretty simple. Keep it simple like we do every single time. Uh, so let's let's get into this. So James, so the news this week then, uh, I believe, is that you guys did the first Oathmark Weekender. How, and how did that go? Do you know what? That was a lot of fun. I wasn't sure exactly what I was expecting, uh, but I know Matt, uh, the guy that ran it, and I knew that he wouldn't turn it into a, you know, a win at all cost tournament type situation, which is definitely not what it was. Um, okay, okay. There was. So did it have some? Did it? Did it have some sort of um, theme to the the, the day or? Yes. Yeah, so it was games? three. It was three linked games. We were split into two teams, so we played on essentially one long board, but not that the the right. games weren't interlinked. Yeah. Sure, um, sure. But it was sort of represent a, a one long battle line. Yeah, um, yeah. So we were playing as a as a team. Um, unfortunately, there was only eight of us playing, so four games at once, because uh, a couple of people pulled out at the last moment because of uh, fuel and because of sickness, I believe. Um, yeah. And in general, I think yeah, the, the location. I don't think Swindon was the the most popular choice uh, for a lot of people. It was a fair old yeah. drive for me to get down there. Yeah, sure, sure. It's maybe, but, maybe next time might be towards sort of London, in London or something like that. Maybe. But it was the, as far as we know, the first Oathmark day, the first Oathmark event in the country. Um, so that was that's it. It's pretty good. It was good to get something started. So now we've got something to yes. build on for next time. Uh, one of the reasons why it was in Swindon, by the way, was because that's where um, Matt Biggs's gaming co- uh, club is. It was held at his normal gaming club venue. So. Oh, okay. Tables okay. and terrain and everything was all was all on hand, um, which yeah. obviously simplifies the organisation quite a lot. Yeah, um, I mean these things are to be built built upon anyway, aren't they? I mean you never have a massive turnout first time, but if you can slowly get it, the word out there and have people come to the next one, and it'll slowly build, and you'll probably find you'll grow out of that venue, and you'll have to find new places to go. Well, then it all starts to become yeah, way more sort of complex to organise, and yeah, much you can. These things can expand. It'd be good to see yeah. a, a, a a bigger a bigger day. But I think one of the good things about there's only being uh, well nine of us there at t- in total was that uh, it was quite easy to say hi to everyone. Um, you know, yeah. I shook hands with everyone there. Uh, I played. Yeah. Um, well, we played only we played. Was it three games? Yeah, it was only three yeah, games. I think. Um, but that didn't mean that did take the whole day. So we started uh, playing uh, by ten o'clock. Uh, cool. And then there was yeah, uh, th- three games that were timed. So I think it was ten till ten till half twelve, and then uh, we had some lunch, and then we played yeah, played two games in the afternoon, and we were done um, and tidy by half five six o'clock. I think we were done. Nice. I think we were doing the prizes and stuff at six o'clock, and then we all went for a curry. Oh, fantastic! Let's see, there you go. That's that's the beauty of how it being a, a smaller event. It's- yeah, it's a bit more intimate. And you're going to, have to go and have a curry. I had a dozer. Uh, so have you ever do... dozer before? No, I've never had one of them <laughs> no, I've before. Never, never. It's like a pancake with like potato and curry in it. Oh, 
<laughs> oh, nice. It was delicious. <laughs> Um, um, so did they did I do the sort of usual things like best painted armies or anything like that? So there was a prize for each for the winner on each side of the table. Yeah. Uh and a prize for the overall winner of the day, uh which was based on objectives and uh most kills. Uh, I was doing yep. quite well actually until my last game and I played this elite really elite army and I could not kill any of his units because all of his units were bolt hard. What, just like line breakers or something? He only had 25 models in the whole army. Oh my god. And I'm thinking, oh, what did I have? I must have had... So uh, so this guy's found a way to break the game then? I don't think he'd done it on purpose. It was more or less just the models he had kicking around and he used a lot of heavy human... Ca- or he used two units of five heavy human cavalry. Heavy oh. human cavalry in Oathmark. Wow. You know, you pay the points for them, oh, but they... Nails. They are nails. Yeah, yeah. But he had enough <laughs> units kicking around that I couldn't concentrate anywhere... And then he had, yeah, the heavy human cavalry, he had a giant, um, oh, I'm trying to think what else he had, but it was all, it was all like Defence 13, which if you're not an Oathmark, sorry, this is, you know, terrible boring if you're not into your Oathmark, but it basically meant that most of the time I was trying to roll 10s on D10s, sure. <laughs> uh, to try and punch through that armour. Um, so yeah, a few really elite units compared to my army, which would have, must have had 100 plus models in it, um, so, uh, mostly sort of... That's- <laughs> Mostly halflings, so <laughs> not super powerful. Yeah, you you will struggle with any army with your halflings. It came, but the, one of the cool things about the night actually was that most players there. There was a, one player that had, this was his first games of Oathmark ever. Oh right, brilliant! Yeah, obviously yeah, I'd only played. Got him into it. Yeah, I'd only played three or four games before, uh, maybe yeah. a few more, but not certainly not many. And that was the first time I'd ever used that army, uh, which played yes. quite differently to my dwarves. Um, yeah, most players, because we all, because obviously the game came out during lockdown, people haven't really been getting back to the clubs. Um, yeah, most of the players are fairly inexperienced, so it made for quite an enjoyable day. Yeah, so that you don't you don't get those people who are there to completely just smash you. you everyone's just having a bit of fun. Um, yeah, I can imagine that that actually, in a strange way, made it a bit more relaxed. Because everyone's just sort of learning the rules as they go along, anyway. Yeah, yeah, and I think yeah. Was, just... was there any um, outstanding armies there? You thought, oh wow, well, that there was a yeah, amazing. there was a best themed army competition yeah. rather than a best painted because uh, okay. they didn't want to do a best painted because they said that's you know it's kind of subjective and it's not your yeah, kind of fault if you can't paint nicely. But getting that. a nice yeah. look of the whole army as a whole is is a good thing. But the guy who did win that um, deserved it. Uh, his army was made out of old Games Workshop um, Nick Lund Goblin Wolf Riders mixed in with some North Star Wolf Riders and some uh, Grenadier Wolf Riders. Um, so we've been getting yeah. some stuff from Forlorn Hope uh, to oh, go with. Yeah, uh, yeah it's old Citadel uh, pre just, pre slaughter. I t- you tell loved you now, it. I would have chosen that one. Yeah, <laughs> I tell you now, I would have chosen that one just by. I haven't even seen it. I'm just thinking about it. <laughs> oh, it was, it was, yeah, he'd done a really good yeah. job on the on the paint job as well. But the whole army yeah. worked really nice. I think he had about four plus units of wolf riders. Um, I said all of these, you know, really old school sculpts. Yeah, um, fantastic. And it suited the game down to the ground. They really looked did, looked the part. Did he did he did he say that he had them just left over from fantasy, or or did he actually pick them off of eBay and to make this army? So I think some of them are, were his models from well back in the day. So I think the original pre-slotted GW stuff was from yeah. back in the day. But I, I don't think he'd ever collected an army that size. So recently sure. he'd been picking some bits up off eBay. And as I said, then getting the the equally old Grenadier stuff, but from Forlorn Hope and yeah, fantastic. places like uh, that. Uh, that sounds beautiful. Is it- yeah, anyway. you can always check them out on the, if you go to the Oathmark players yeah, page on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, it's a guy called Giles uh, that did that. Uh, so you check out his post. So you can see his lovely yeah. painted wolves on there. Um, so um, anyway, yeah. James, I think we I think we we've waffled on about uh, Mark. <laughs> it was a, it was a good day though, and uh, I'm looking forward <laughs> to the next one. Good stuff. Good, good. Um, right, let's uh, let's crack on then. Let's get on to the main topic. The main topic: painting by numbers versus rule of cool. So, um, so what do I mean I'm by gonna, this? Yeah, I'm going to let you start here, James, and I'm going to join it, jump in as you talk. So I'm um, we're thinking about the two extremes of, of building an army for any war game. And certain games it's more applicable to than others, which we'll get on to. 
Um, and certain games sort of almost encourage it. And certain games, you know, it's almost impossible. Uh, so what we mean is, when, we say, when I say painting by numbers, I mean you copy the box art, you, uh, there's a set way of painting a model, and you do that. Uh, you, use the, you use the paint that's called the thing you're painting, and yeah, you just set the rigid, rigid way, and it's yep. just, yeah, that's the way it's done. Compared yes. to rule call, so whole themed armies where you've sort of maybe used some proxies, generally this sort of army I'm thinking of has a lot of conversions they've generally done something crazy with the basing mm -hmm. so that so so they're, they're almost they're using their imagination a little bit more in terms of what yeah the going to look like like yeah. full imagination um you would you know this, these armies tend to be yeah uh, like generally a really sort of ingenious theme I really like some of them uh yeah. whether it's even if it's just uh Say putting like a historical twist on something. So where whereas Oathmarks humans factions, you're not ninety percent of the armies have got a sort of Saxon feel. Um, yeah. Every now and again, you'll see like a Greek one, for instance. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And you know, all the monsters will be appropriately. Um, so Odyssey. So, the, so so this 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 then really will depend on what you're playing, because if you're playing a historical game. Uh, you're almost expected to stick to either the the box art or the historical um, colours of that unit, uh, uh, and quite you know quite often if if you're not you're you're sort of you're told you know <laughs> that's wrong. Um, I do remember your so, Italians, your poor Italians. Uh, Use the oh, wrong blue there. Oh, oh, I'll never forget that. Really hurt me. <laughs> but that, yeah, and, and 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 you could they people can be quite militant about that. And I think. Um, I think there's all this, there's painting guides, isn't there? There's uniform guides and people yeah. use oh, God. history yeah, books and stuff. Exactly. And, and, but that is also kind of the hobby as well is to learn the history about it. Yeah. Uh, and to learn the colors and, you know, yes, you might get it wrong, a little, little wrong here and there. Shouldn't make that much difference. But it, it, as long as in, in general, the, the army looks like. Yeah. There's know, a difference between trying to go. Be, Historically accurate yeah. versus but button counters, they call them, don't they, in uh, yeah. historicals? Yeah. Rivet exactly. counters for the more modern stuff. But you can most certainly, um, it's almost a hobby in itself, learning how to paint these miniatures, um, which is like, say, a hobby I found. Um, <laughs> where, whereas if you're playing more of like a sci fi fantasy, you've definitely got much more room for maneuver in terms of uh, how you're going to paint a unit. Uh, but that doesn't mean you don't get your, uh, your, your, your snivelers and say, "Oh, well, that's that's the wrong colour for that particular." Uh, okay, there is one thing I can thing. think of though. Is uh, I'm thinking bolt action because, as, as you know, I've not got a, yeah. a lot of uh, um, yeah historically yeah, historic, historical historical miniatures thing. games, but yep. bolt action is yep. the main one I've played. But for, there's armies, lesser known armies like French partisans or. Uh, like the yeah. uh, Polish or uh, which army has like the skiers in? I think it's like the Polish army, isn't it? Where you have yeah. the the guys yeah. in the white suits and the skis, which can make you know they're not the mainstream armies. Uh, and normally, I think to get those armies out, you have to sort of make a few kit bashes and conversions. Mm -hmm. Um, so they're still very historically accurate, but they're still kind of leaning down that thing of putting a really heavy theme on something. Yeah, and it opens and up snow uh, themes up. or yeah. desert themes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, definitely, definitely. Not, not just I am not saying that historical gaming. You you don't have that variety. You certainly do. And to be honest with you, really, I'd say the the whole paint by numbers thing in in historical gaming really quite often only applies to more sort of Napoleonic's. Mm. Uh, sometimes World War Two. But if you go further back in history, so you know, sort of medieval times or the or the ancients, you know, no one really knows. Oh yeah, what hey, colours they wear. Yeah, and I mean, no one really knows what colours they wear. Like people obviously you got a good guess that maybe they didn't have this particular colour or they didn't have that particular colour in them days. But in general, no one really knows. So it's only the sort of more modern history that where there's it's well documented as to what colours and. And uniforms were used is, is, to, is that they're the ones that are a little bit more stringent so it's definitely not um doesn't tie back 
the whole of, on the whole of the historical gaming community on on what they can of, and cannot paint their armies like. Yeah. It's def it's definitely uh, there's definitely scope in there. Like and like you say, and it's maybe just being a bit more cleverer, clever in, uh, say for example, World War Two sort of stuff is is maybe using things like you know is it it's more the atmosphere the where they are like they, is, are they in the desert are they in are they in snow. Uh, that can the really theater. help theme your army. Yeah. Oh, I saw a really cool uh, Pacific uh, American army actually a while back. They've done some really nice base in, uh, like, so you know, uh, pond, uh, terrarium plant sort of stuff. Mm. Uh, and then they've done a whole bunch of kit bashes and oh, they might be in Aust- they might be in Australia. Any either way though, it was yeah, really nice sort of allied Pacific army and it was kind of cool. Um, and I said yeah. one of the other things is conflict as well. So I've always seen that that people play around with the uh, conflict because then you're out, kind of out of that historical constraint a little bit. But at the same time, the stuff that is like, for instance, I paint my conflict mechs, <laughs> giant robots, a fairly yeah, historically yeah. accurate, um, you know, British drab, you know, the, the, the standard. <laughs> As you imagine, they it might have been back then type thing. Well, if you've got a big pot of tank paint, you're going to paint everything that looks like a tank. I, <laughs> I guess that's my that was sort of thought process. Definitely, like like say, and, and, and things like conflict do give, well, especially um, bolt action that sort of sci-fi feel, which gives it does give you that uh, option to um, expand your army, ch- change the colours, change uh, change the design of it. Uh, just because of the nature of the, of, the yeah, of that particular game, your Italian uniform colour came out in the alternate history line. <laughs> yeah, there was nothing wrong with that colour. That guy was just an idiot. <laughs> um, okay, so I think we've established what it is, what we mean. So I was going to go with uh, the good points and then the bad points of uh, sort of both things. So I reckon we'll start with the good points of the payment numbers, and I think we've kind of covered some of it. Um, but I think the big one is going to be recognizable models. If you see a model that is painted the sort of the standard way from across a table, you go, I know what that is. Yeah, yeah. that is what it, yeah, that's clear uh, and recognizable. I'm that thinking, is an ultramarine. That is, well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the sort of ultramarine is the example I was going to use later, but yeah, that is Sorry. an ultramarine yeah. for sure. Yeah, this, um, I'm trying to think of other good, other good examples particularly. But I think, I think Games Workshop's a big one for this because I think a lot of the smaller games we play, you do have a bit more, uh, there's less prescribed colour schemes. Well, games work. Games work. They've always made their own history to yeah, follow. Yeah, it, this is it. Games Workshop's a bit of an anomaly to it with it all, isn't it? Because um, actually, if you're playing with some real diehard, you know, Games Workshop fanboys, the history to there is almost as fixed as the history in the historical gaming side of things. You know, that they, they will literally tell you, you know, that <laughs> that's not how you paint that Space Marine. You know, yeah. You know, it's the yeah, well, it's, yeah. It's a very, it's a very strange. It sort of it falls into those realms. Definitely, I totally agree. Well, you've got your uh, in, in old fantasy. You had the sort of human armies. You sort of Reichland versus uh, uh, Nuln sort of army sort of co- themes, uh, and they all had those painting guides and stuff for all the different uh, seas and everything like that. And then uh, I'm thinking in 40k as well as the Eldar. And they've got quite prescribed craft world yep. colours, haven't they? This is the they do. Ian- Ianden yep. with the the they're the blue and yellow, aren't they? Sure. Uh, they, that, and then there's the it, green ones it. with the vines on and stuff. You know, they're quite set options that are, are there. Yeah. And then obviously, yeah, there's you know, you got, you got your ultramarines, you got your blood angels. There's a very if you're saying, oh, this is a blood angels army, you're pretty much going to expect it to be red and black. Yeah, correct. <laughs> but I mean, but but Games Workshop do try to encourage creating your own chapter or create your own craft world they, yeah you know that and that's part of it as well um, and a lot of people do uh, and you can get some amazing armies in that way yeah uh some more good points then um and this is kind of one of the reasons i do it is you don't really have to think about a paint scheme you don't have to think what's going to work you don't have to start looking at color wheels or thinking of paint theory if you're not very good at that yeah. sort of stuff you can go yeah that works 
uh, and I think an example of that for me was uh, with Warplock, Arcworld, and My Halflings are pretty much the same scheme as Alex, the sculptor author, uh, yes, they are. used yeah. on his. Um, yeah. Because I thought that looks cool, uh, which is a yep. uh, a blue and white um, sort of. I don't know what you call it. There's a so it's almost like a harlequin, it's like check, yeah, sort of stripes and stuff like that, isn't it? So um, yeah, it's like basically alter, alternate, you know, left and right color yep. versus the sleeves. So the sleeves are the yep. opposite color to the left or right side of the tunic. Um, and yeah, it's more or less the the default color scheme. And that was just because yeah, it took it took a little bit of stress off trying to look at these models at the time were completely new to me. And I thought, no, that's a that's a good way of doing. It. That's a good example. I'll I'll yeah. follow that, and I think that makes that. Uh, I think that can be good sometimes. I think yeah. you can still be creative, um, oh, but follow by following definitely following a good scheme. And once again, yeah, if if I'm going to paint some second edition Eldar at some point, I'm going to go with that blue and yellow color scheme because I'm like, do you know what? If I look at a big book full of Eldar, that's the one I like. Yeah, sure. Um, I, I def I mean, for for me, James. This is this is this is how I painted as ever since as a kid, you know. Um, I I very rarely go off spec, let's say. Um, especially you know starting, I started back in in uh, probably sort of, uh, second edition forty k when I was a youngster, and I I saw the the box art and I wanted to play, paint Blood Angels. It was as simple as that. It mm -hmm. was like that was the the pictures and the artworks. Uh, all sort of just made me want to have that army so i wanted to paint that army so it was it was paint by numbers it was just follow follow the guides get it to ex exactly the same as as much as i could back then uh, and to be honest with you to a lot to a certain extent i still do that i still do that now i i really enjoy looking at the artwork that someone's done and then try and recreate that yeah yeah no uh, that's, and that's that's kind of a that's i, I like to sort of almost pitch my skills against that person and see if i can if i if i have any if my model complements that particular model that's on the box art uh, and i think you're right there is an element of being lazy as well to that for me um if <laughs> it, it does take out the thought of working out what colors will work better if i'm going to do this that and the other um but yeah i don't know I, there's something there's something quite special and magical recreating an army that you've seen in a picture for example actually these howling griffins i'm doing currently mm -hmm. at the moment um i'm literally my my goal is to try and uh recreate to a to probably a smaller degree but that uh that fred fred reed's uh howling griffin army back in second edition sort of 92 whenever it, that he did that yeah, that's cool yeah that and that and that's but that's my muse that's what i'm trying that's what i'm aiming for that's when i'm painting the miniatures i have a little i go back to that that image uh to gauge am, am i doing this correctly where do i want to go here what colors what colors the chest eagle for example you know i'm i am actually i do so i do do that now this is how i how i paint a lot of my stuff um and i don't think i don't think that means you're less of a painter no all. no i don't think i don't Oh, yeah, I don't think I don't think it I don't think it means that you you have less creativity or uh, you can't paint as well. I think it means um, that you like to. I, I honestly think it means you like to aspire to a standard. It actually, in some respects, helps you to get better, and it also will help you with color theories because the stuff on the box art will have been worked to color theory standards. They. Oh yeah, like a genuine it, it, artist will have come up with those. Yeah, exactly. It works well on a box art because they've designed it to work well. It looks nice for a reason. Um, so you subconsciously you will learn those theories. You'll learn. I'm looking at a. I'm looking at a box of the uh well the the old black orcs, but the the Ard boys now just sitting here on my desk, and they're a yellow and a sort of black, and it just looks really nice. And I yeah. think if I when I got them out, I'd probably paint them yellow and black it's just because it just looks nice in the box art so it's uh it's yeah it's it's a, it's a funny one but that's definitely how i've painted pretty much throughout my hobby hobby career as such and i think it's not only yeah as you say i'd not really thought about it like there's the sort of aspiration to 
to match these official themes. But also, mm. I think if you are a beginner to the hobby, or even the beginner to a game, like I mentioned with Artworld earlier, mm-hmm. um, especially yeah, if you're a beginner painter, I, 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 there's probably not really many other ways to do it, unless you are really creative from the get-go. And I've met people like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, you get, you, you, you can definitely just... get people who are really, ta- I'll say talented, but just have a, have a vision straight away, how they, they know what they want. But I think, yeah, if you if you're not that sort of person, if you're not super creative like that, I think it can be a really good way just to uh, get people mm. started. Uh, which I think was one of the pe- things people like we were talking oh a couple of weeks ago now about uh, Star Wars Legion. Yeah. Um, and then obviously, yeah, this, that's getting a lot of people painting for the first time, as far as I can tell. And then how do you paint them? Well, there's you know nine uh, films that cover the. Oh, yeah. uh, you're you're not going to paint a stormtrooper blue, are you? You might yeah. paint it sand coloured, but no, Maybe. in general, <laughs> they're not. Good. Yeah, they, they'll go blue. They're white. Sorry, that's just how it is. But yeah, that's that. Everyone knows a stormtrooper. Yeah, by the colour. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay, I think we covered. I think it's a it's a uh, pretty good thing, it's actually, pretty good reason. Oh, no, Karen. There's, no, there's just another one here, actually, very quickly, um, and it's just touching on the historical side of things and we just very quickly touched it earlier um and and it's about being creative in the historical side of things but still keeping to the schemes and i've seen this done and i think this is done really well by a youtuber who, who's called on point hq mm-hmm. okay and he, pre- he pretty much only does bolt action okay he's pretty solely only bolt action and he's a he's a, he's a good painter um, I wouldn't say he's like the most amazing painter, but he's a good painter. So all his stuff looks clean, neat, tidy. But what he's so good at is converting. He just jumbles all the packs of all the different plastic kits you can get uh, from like uh, the British and the Germans, the, uh, you know, the Italians. And oh. he'll and he'll create. I'm looking a, at his say, videos say, now, and it's uh, yeah, let's keep. Let's kit kit bash the US Airborne, and the, I'm looking at yeah, the little yeah. oh, thumbnail there. It's so good, and it's so he's so creative, but no one can turn around and tell him that. Well, that's not a, a US Airborne figure. Like it, it, he does it so well and so cleverly, um, and it, it's very it's very good. And I would recommend that any, anyone who's uh, not seen him before, please check him out because he's it's very interesting. If you like a bow action, he's 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 fantastic. But what the point is. That he he's showing creativity, but still painting by numbers. Yeah, and I think as I said, I mentioned earlier, things like uh, French Resistance or I saw a a really heavily converted. Um, I said we're kind of into the next bit actually, but yeah, uh, now we're flowing into flowing into it. Yeah, so the next so the next bit we we're going to cover was the the good points of um, just going completely off script. And I think, yeah. yeah, this lines up. I saw a really nice, if a little bit depressing, um, fall of Berlin uh, army, German army. Yep. Um, which I saw after, I don't know if it was inspired by, but I saw after, have you seen the film Jojo Rabbit? Did you want to uh, see that one? I haven't, one? no. No, I haven't. Oh, it was quite, it was a funny old film, that one. Is, that, um, is, it, depre- is, it, is it depressing? It was funny, but yeah. I mean, right. it was about the fall of Berlin and, yeah, it's not going to be nice, is it? And Jews and yeah, mm. wasn't uh, and some of it's hilarious. Even the saddest moments, it does have quite a good. Um, so written by uh, the guy whose name I cannot pronounce and won't attempt. Uh, but from what we do in the shadows, uh, he wrote for Thor Ragnarok. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm not even going to attempt it. But he no, plays. He plays. Um, there's a boy and he has an imaginary friend who's Hitler. God. <laughs> uh, no, I haven't. So I the director is yeah playing Hitler in the uh, right in the thing, but yeah, this is uh, interesting. Anyway, the 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 last section of that uh, covers the the fall of Berlin uh, and the idea that you've got the 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 Hitler Youth and what soldiers are left are wearing you know scraps of this and that and whatever they can sort of muster, and obviously all the yeah. weapons are ad hoc. Uh, and I see, yeah, I saw a really nice army, and as you say, it's not 
they'd completely gone if they hadn't just bought the kits and assembled them and followed the painting guide. Yeah, yeah. They'd yeah. really like put this this uh, sort of ragtag army together. Well, yeah, and that, and that's actually that's in, that's interesting. That again, that's kind of like the concept that on on point HQ has is that like the the story he'll do like a little diorama and the story behind the diorama is like this German soldier is is like maybe killed a a US Marine has picked up his gun type thing. Yeah. yeah that, he's, he's created a story behind it. And I really like that. That's really fun. Something sometimes you don't get in historicals as much as that sort of, um, yeah, storyline to it. Yeah. It's yeah. Good. So I think, so I think, yeah, so the good points of carry on being, yeah, you, you, if you've done a theme and you've been creative, I think you end up sometimes with maybe not a nicer looking army. I think it's probably the wrong word, but like a, a more, impressive army in a way that Stand you'd walk past army. yeah and you'd walk past and go that's interesting I think, that's... I think the best the best examples of this for me i catch in the best examples for this for me has got to be some of the kings of war armies uh when everyone was going oh no there's no there's no fantasy oh let's go to this kings of war thing and then realizing it's all about um multi-basing yeah and you've got you know You've got to create these massive bases with all these different things, and there's been some fantastic little di. Basically, it's mini di dioramas. Yeah. On a base, and uh, there's been some really fantastic mini dioramas. And let's be honest, no one really knows much about the Kings of War lore, so no one really cares what they look like. I mean, they've completely changed and... it. I think they, I think they completely just retconned a bunch of stuff and reinvented it. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, so, between the two editions, so it's. it's... But it, but what it did though gave everyone be like, that creativity, didn't it? Uh, so here, go make an army. What well, doesn't matter what colours, it could do any whatever you like. And some people just really did went to town. There were some really nice halfling armies I found uh, online where they've they've got like they're living in their little huts and oh, it's, it's fantastic. There was an army um, I saw before they released the official models for the Night Stalkers. There was a quite a bit of period of time where the, the army list was out, but the models weren't. Uh, yeah. And I saw a really nice one during that Cthulhu tentacle monster themed army um, using miniatures from all over the shop. But even though the miniatures were from everywhere, like, you know, a different company per miniature practically, they yeah. still managed to tie that all together and make a, a really convincing army. They used yeah, the yeah. Kraken that I actually have, the Reaper Bones Kraken, which is kind of cool. Uh, okay. Um, nice. As a something, yeah, some sort of war beast. But yeah, there's, there's definitely games out there that lend lend themselves to being creative, and I, and as as much as Kings of War has its flaws, and you know, it's it's not my favourite game in the world, but at the same time, it, it does allow for that creat creativity, uh, which I, I I enjoy. I definitely enjoy looking at. I personally, I find I'm I'm not great at creating an army like that. It, I find it very hard to okay. Because it, it takes a lot of time, and I think a lot of people sit sit down and create um, curate their how their army's going to look before doing it. Yeah, Whereas yeah, I think that's it. what you kind of have to do if you're yeah. going to do uh, something like that. Yeah, uh, you have I'm... to think about that. You've probably have got to, you're probably yeah. going to buy most of it in one go because uh, yeah. you've got a plan ahead. You're gonna ha yeah, you're gonna limit to to your army list build. You're gonna have to think about all of this beforehand. It's gonna be a proper project rather than yeah. I think a lot of us just build armies that. I mean, I've not done it so much for a while. I've tended to bought the last couple of armies I've bought in one go, but in the olden days, I, I never bought more than a box here and a box there and added to something. So it's yeah. only a relatively new thing for me to go and say, all right, I'll buy three boxes of that, two boxes of that. Yeah. Uh, and a couple of yeah, these guys. Then you, might, you might have been playing fantasy then, and all you had to do was just add add some goblins to your units. Yeah. So it weren't it weren't like the end of the world, was it? And, you know... It was paint. Yeah, he's paid my numbers back then. Yeah. I just want to mention of a Kings of War one I saw actually. Uh, I don't know if yeah. you you know that there's a painting called the the Night Watch by Rembrandt. Um, and I only know it because it's they do a parody of it on the cover of a Terry Pratchett book of the same name. Okay. Um, but it's a cool painting, and I've, I think I've seen it. Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. It's a really cool painting. Um, I've just a bunch of people sort of walking out of a sort of archway. And there's like kids and a dog and it's like a sort of organized chaos and a guy did a kings of war unit that was like he as you said like a diorama he did a, a background like a backdrop on the unit 
Um, so I mean, absolutely ridiculous for gaming with because you at this point you've you know you're carrying around a oh god yeah. <laughs> stone archway like the whole wall back wall. So, so, but so, to I, look at the pieces, I think he, I think there was three main pieces of this spearman unit. That, so, so did he did he mimic, mimic this painting in a way? In, in a, he mimicked in a the painting. So almost every model was converted to fit the yeah. role in the painting. Is that is that kind of like painting by numbers? Oh, well, because he copied the painting, but <laughs> yeah. it's so far, so far away <laughs> from. Um, joke. Yeah, I know, I know. So that's from, but no, you're right, you're right. And once again, you get that historical thing again, and it's like, oh. yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> um, I, I mean, he had uh, put his own spin in it because the painting's kind of uh, well, I don't know, Renaissancey. Um, yeah, but course. whereas they, they he put more of a sort of medieval type tone on it. Um, but yeah, it was. I mean, the guy must have spent months. I mean, you know, this was serious. Like, just, you know, when you, sometimes you look at these things and just go, "Wow!" Like, yeah. just, wow. But yeah. Um, okay, so I think, I, think, I think I think what we're alluding here, though, what we're we're alluding to is that when you're um, you're sort of creating your own army in 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 the sense of going for a different color scheme or or in in whatever way. You're, that's when you're all really, you are really being more artistic. Yeah, I think you you are being more. Uh, you you have to go and you have to plan it. It's not something that happens. You 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 need to sit back, work out exactly what colours you're going to be using. You know the style, the the ambience that you want these miniatures to give. I mean that 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 um, Kings of War army you just mentioned in there uh, about the Rembrandt painting is a perfect example he had to work out what colors will create that tone yeah and that and that fitting i mean no yeah and that and that takes a lot a lot of skill actually and a lot of time uh whereas you don't get that by painting the box art because you, you don't need to you don't need to spend that sort of time doing that you can just get you can see the colors you can work it out and you just get on yeah, so oh, yeah, I would say, I would say it's 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 for for most people it is harder to try and come up oh, with something oh, like that. Well, well, I mean, I'll be the first one to say that I don't do that because there's a couple of reasons. One, I'm a little bit lazy and I don't have loads of hobby time, uh, so I don't want to. And I and I don't get me wrong, I really would love to sit down and curate a perfect army, something that I'm so proud of. Um, but yeah, I think it's just time. I think it's just one of that's one of those things. If if you've got that time to do it, then yeah, crack on, because some sometimes that I think you're right, James. When at the start of this, you say you you sort of hesitant to say the self a self made army or a self uh, created army can be more impressive, and I think it can. Striking, yeah, you, yeah. You because you you put more heart and soul into it. That and that's and I think that's that's the key yeah yeah and this is what i'm saying uh so the other points i'd written was sort of yeah it's 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 more unique it's very much your army you're going to take mm. that to a, a, a games day or a tournament or, or even just post it online and you know it's probably you know not going to be much else out there but, well that's the that sort looks of like it and that's yeah that's the, that, that's the sort of army that would win that you can, yeah day. and that you can be really uh, uh, um painting competition event yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. um i so, so carry on from that then uh I think it also gives you sort of, I think sometimes it can be kind of limiting the way if you put too strong a theme on an army, it can be limiting. But at the same time, I think it gives you more freedom. You can paint the army exactly the way you like it. And as long as the whole th scheme works, mm -hmm. I think you've got, you do have that bit of extra freedom. Uh, and it means that you can do, uh, potentially do more conversions. So I did an ogre army years ago um, for fantasy uh, but almost every single model uh, was converted to be sort of chaosy so i you yeah. know, i added extra mutations and shields and yeah every single model in the whole army to a greater or lesser extent uh had been converted uh which because i quite like conversion i quite like the building stage more really sometimes than the painting well, stage yeah i mean you you only have to look at your youtube channel i think most people would see that mate yeah and it's um so yeah, it gave me that kind of freedom to really mess around with these models a bit more, and yeah, freedom to just yeah stick some extra arms on and extra eyes and 
yeah, yeah, that was it was a good laugh. And then at the overall, uh, you know, when I'd done, I ended up with an army that was that was fairly, you know, not so, you know, chaos ogres isn't a brand new concept by a long stretch, but sure. I um, well, yeah, it was left with something pretty unique looking. Yeah, um, and and you felt you felt to yourself, I'm you know, I'm pretty proud of this. this is different to anyone else's ogre chaos army. I saw some photos of it the other day because I sold it. Um, uh, but yeah, I saw some photos of it the other day. I was like, wow. Like some of it's quite painted quite nicely, but some of it, oh, I, I'd be ashamed these days. But that's that's. It. I mean, that was far. Oh, must have done that. But uh, but 10 then years that's ago. the trial. That's the, that's the trial. Yeah. Well, there there is that. There's the fact that you did it a long time ago. There's also, I think, the trials and tribulations as well of when you embark yourself on creating yourself a unique army. And maybe I think uh, uh, we're probably rolling in now into the good, uh, into the into the sort of bad points. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it, and this would be a bad point for creating your own unique army is you get burnout because you know you've got to spend a lot of time working out how you're going to do that particular army. And then once you've worked out that particular s- scheme, it's very likely not every single time, but very likely you're going to be doing the same thing for every single model. <laughs> Yeah. So and, and it and it will burn and it will burn you. Saying that, I mean, you you could say that for the historical side of things, just painting by numbers, trying yeah. to paint a, paint a hundred British uniforms. Well, I've gone on this uh, this forest oh. forest green and lemon yellow for my uh, Oathmark army, and I've painted those two colours now just so much. Well, and I know when they're done, and they're all the same two colours across the whole every unit. But all the units what, are going to look quite distinct. All the units are going to look quite different, but the colour yeah. scheme is going to be the same. I got yeah. a load of compliments about that colour scheme at the... Um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's very striking. It looks really nice. At the weekend. Uh, and, I'm not surprised. Yeah, and uh, I'm, I'm quite proud of it. It's just, as you say, I've got, you know, another 60 halflings to paint and another uh, 20, no, yeah, 20 yeah. archers and some other bits and pieces. And it's all going to be the same colour scheme. So at this point, I am kind of painting by numbers, but they just, I, yeah, yeah. I came up with the numbers. Well, here you go. Here, this, and I think it's the difference between... Because you can have... You obviously can get burnout from painting just painting by, by, by numbers. But here's, here's the difference, okay? And I think this is a good, fairly good example. I paint Napoleonics, okay? And yes, they burn me out. I'm not a good Napoleonic painter. I, I get so far and I get burnt out and then I come back again in four months time try do a bit more get burnt out and get pumped back again in another sort of four or five months time that that's just the way i do napoleonics i don't i can't bash them out there's a few guys we know who, who can really bash them out and i like you know I'm at, I, I can't i they're amazing those people who can do that it's just fantastic um however right but i i am i'm completely put off really if i'm honest with you with turnip now I like the idea of the game. I, I was going to mention turnip uh, actually, so I'll say my bit on uh, turnip first. I think the the idea okay. of that is the ultimate. Like some people have done turnip forty k armies. I've seen now uh, yeah. turnip both marked stuff. I've seen a bit of that, and I think I love it. I love it as an aesthetic, and it because it's the, the, it my borders on that strangeness. strangeness. I think yeah, it's it's great, right? And that help, and it's fantastic for being creative. My my biggest problem with that for me is I don't want to spend all that time converting like old Napoleonic models or this models to, to fit the and that and now I will sit and paint Napoleonic models but do I want to sit and convert a load of paint, uh, Napoleonic models and then paint them no yeah so that, that, that. and that's where and that's where the burnout is okay so that and and that's what you find with a an army that's completely unique to yourself you've got to uh spend that time because a lot, a lot it of it will, uh, yeah a lot of it will be down to the conversions and not necessarily the paint scheme so i think that is the difference between me who prefers building the models and you prefers painting them because uh, I've, I've built models for you in the past haven't i i think i put oh, a bunch yeah. of your empire yeah, yeah. together uh, i've um, got a um i'm looking actually i'm looking at it now i've got an orc catapult which you built from scratch Oh well, yeah, that's which, sculpted. Which that's a bit different. Which I've never actually painted, but I, but still, it's sitting there, ready to be painted at some point. Um, but yeah, you're right. I'm it trying is, to tell it, where it we is, are now. There, there is a difference. We're 
bad, good and bad, uh, sorry, the bad. I said it is. Now, so. It's, uh, well, yeah, I mean, it, 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 all of this comes down to what you enjoy doing, really. I mean, just do what you enjoy, but. Okay, so we'll do the bad, the bad of um, sort of just following the schemes. And I think we covered a bunch of these now, which is the burnout. You're going to do the same color scheme 100 times. Um, you're going to converse to some of the good points you made. You take your ultramarines to a, a Games Workshop tournament. There's going to be some other ultramarines there. If you're both good painters and have a similar painting style, you know, you've both followed the, the Games Workshop prescribed painting video, they're going to look very similar. I mean, yeah. I've seen armies painted by teams and which I suppose could be a good thing, really. You can get a team to paint your army uh, and they'll still look cohesive on the tabletop because you're all following the same thing. Yeah, I mean, I mean, of course, and that's how they actually would do that um, at GW. The, the heavy metal team just work as teams and bash out big armies together not not they don't very rarely do they just one person paint an army well there used to be a uh, games workshop as events and i don't know the, the specifics but um that where they asked us each store to bring an army mm -hmm. uh they brought each store had to bring like two thousand points uh, so back when you were encouraged still encouraged to hang around in the shops um i painted a bunch of demons um for for the whatever army that event that was uh yeah. that year and so, yeah, they just had, you know, they roped in some child labour. <laughs> and anyone anyone wandering around took a paintbrush in your hand and said, you know. Oh, uh, if anyone's been to uh, GW recently in um, Nottingham, they've got the big display of the chaos um, uh, fighting the Ultramarines. Mm. I mean, that, that would have been done over, like, over, you know, probably 10 or 20 painting guys painting them up for that particular you know taking probably a year to do there was maybe a, even longer there was a project actually i saw uh back to your historical so, thing on this team painting thing which was the there was a, a group of guys trying to do a, a number realistic and i think it might have been like waterloo or something like that uh, cool. and they were willing to supply the models for you yeah uh -huh. um and it was just like they'd send you 20 models get you to paint them and then you'd send them you models fight. you'd send them back they send you yeah. over 20 models and it was kind of like a, a charity thing and their aim was to put on a, a diorama um you know with thousands and thousands of models which obviously one person could never do in their lifetime no um so they sort of crowd crowdsourced the painting on that i think you needed something like seventy five thousand people for that you know uh, uh, models or something silly like that I mean, it's a lot a lot of models and i thought that was quite interesting it wasn't really wargaming um but they were appealing to wargame painters obviously because you know, yeah, of course. We can slap some yeah. paint on a on a uh, on a figure. <laughs> yeah, that and uh, you've got to get it right. You want to get the buckles wrong. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so back to the sort of bad sides. It can be a bit boring. You, you know, maybe your army's not going to feel that unique. Um, I think for some people, I know obviously not for everyone, not for yourself, but for me, I feel like this is a creative hobby. I quite like being creative. Um, and I think if yeah, I but if that, I, that, that's, a funny, that's a funny one. Because if I follow the rules, yeah, you can. But I think if I if I feel like if I put a kit, plastic kit together the way it's meant to, I've almost uh, done myself yeah, but, a disservice. Uh, I, see, I, I see that. I no, I see that differently because the way I'm creative is I just I I paint in I try different techniques of painting. Yeah, for me that's being creative. So, you know, I won't. I don't always paint the GW way. I might do some other different things like blend wet blending or maybe do some uh you know or glazing or whatever it might be to create the finish that i want yeah. uh but then but that but for me that's that's the creative side of it is is that with the way you paint them um and so and sometimes well for for me that's some that's how you get a really nice model when yeah. you see these pro painters painting stuff it, it's it could be stuck together in any of which way but it'll still look amazing because of how they've painted it and the techniques they've used uh, but and you couldn't tell them you couldn't say to that person that's not creative no you know? yeah no that's fair that is fair so, so but I, I, I do understand what you mean though uh you are very much a pragmatic hobbyist you like to you like to get bits change those bits and stick some more bits <laughs> yeah well, i'm almost allergic to putting a kit together i, yeah, 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 I, yeah, I can't just this, clip it off its screw and stick thing. it together yeah uh, no exactly and but that but then that thing i just shows the the huge variety that is in this particular hobby you can like so many different aspects of the hobby yeah 
Oh, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I've met people who are pure gamers, people who are pure yeah. painters. Uh, and, and, and you probably find those pure gamers will probably generally, as a rule, pack, stick to painting by numbers because they want it. They want it done quick. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably not even that. They'll mm. they'll find an even quicker way. What if they'll read the tournament pack? If it says three. If it says three colors. They'll go. Uh, yeah. They'll put three yeah, colors I, on it. I dis I disagree with that, but that's what people I mean, do. You're yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Once again, it comes down to the game as well. Oh, something I did want to mention a second ago, I think it's sort of crossed between the two, is uh, Saga. Saga Age of Magic is an interesting the way you put the armies together because you don't, it doesn't really mandate what models. So, for instance, my current Oathmark army, I'm not sure if it was going to fit necessarily within the the Woodland King Kingdom or whatever it was called mm-hmm. or the, the Horde. Uh, and Beastmen are another one who could also fit in both of those categories. Um, dwarves, you could even run them as the sort of... Um, I don't remember all the, the names of each faction off by heart, but you could run them as the sort of uh, fancy human Bretonian style faction or as the sort of underdwellers, which just gives you different aspect, you know, different play styles. So the the factions aren't what models you've got, it's what theme you're going for. And I think that's quite interesting. I think I decided to put my army, do my army as Lords of the Wild, which meant that really early on in my idea for my themed army, which I use for both both Mark and Saga and whatever else I can fit it in, was yeah. that uh, Enchanted Forest is the sort of, you know, keyword. And that's what I really wanted to sort of follow. So that, I think, encourages as a whole game system encourages a themed army because you have to pick your theme rather than pick your faction yeah 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 so that yeah so that creates that 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 um pushes you down the the being more creative side with with your miniatures uh because you can because you 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 can pretty much throw whatever you like in there as long as your story backs up what you're going in with yeah and they have uh categories of things like quadruped creature and Mm, like bipedal creature and like like Titan, uh, or yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. the yeah, yeah. things things that matter on sort of human sized figures, whether or not they've got a bow, you need to that needs to be clear. But whether it's got three heads and a bow, or whether he's but yeah. and this but this leads me to a bad point actually for um, being sort of have these more creative side of uh, you know um, unique armies, mm-hmm. and that's and that's the armies that you find. And quite, again, I'm going back to Kings of War here. That's those sort of toy armies, like we were mentioning before we came on, on air here. I think toy armies uh, is the ultimate worst case scenario with going your own way and doing your own thing. Yeah. I think. Oh, here's my minion army of minion toys. Or, or yeah, oh. or My Little Pony. Oh no! I, and I, some people are like, <laughs> but that's some people are like, oh, you, you're a snob if you don't want to pe- play this My Little Pony army. And I'm like, no, I do this hobby for a few reasons and i go to a game today and i really appreciated the work that some people have put in their armies when i was playing this weekend yeah if someone it's almost an insult to me if you put down something like that i don't care how much work you put into it either if it doesn't fit the general theme and feeling of the game that would really annoy me yeah i think i'm with you and the same goes if it's if it's Poundland spiders and rubber snakes, which yeah. I've seen. And, and and again, actually, you know, think thinking on this, that that, that is probably why um, maybe you know a lot of historical players get annoyed with you if you painted your British blue. No, you know, that's a fair point. That, 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 because that would be so. Well, this is this is just that's, that that is not how that does not. Um, it's not in the theme of they're playing that game for a specific reason and that is to recreate a historical situation correct what is blue british doing here that's not yeah you know they might as well be space marines Uh, yeah you've ruined it yeah exactly correct so it it it, what so it's interesting actually that that sort of trying to be really creative and out there type army can can be found in both sides of the hobby whether it's historical or sci-fi fantasy um which is interesting i never really sort of thought of it like that so i could you know and and people again 
people spend a lot of time trying investing in time and trying to learn the history to these you know to these historical games uh, and when someone comes along and just whacks something like that down I, I dare say they're a little bit like well hang on a minute i spent all this time doing this and what have you done you don't care yeah so, and i mean yeah. I, I suppose that would even go to the the models and any conversions as well you'd just be like no that's not that's not how things were that's not accurate yeah. like why you mm. why you kind of because playing a game against someone is is a two-person thing there's yeah. a certain you know you you're both trying to have a good time but you're also both trying to make sure the other person has a good time i think that's important too if you can have a good game well depends on who you're playing it depends, yeah. depends. as i said I, I think that's important <laughs> if, you, if you if you if intend to have a good time yeah if you're playing amongst friends, then that's how it should be. But if you go to a competition, then you... Which is why I don't think I'll... It's why competitions don't interest me. It's why I've never really been to any. Which is why I wouldn't have gone hey, to... Hey. I, I maybe would have gone to the Earth Mark thing if it had been a competition. Um, and obviously there was a competition element because we're playing I, a game. I ho- but but I, I hope the Earth Mark thing doesn't go competition. I think... I hope that... I hope they keep it sort of more narrative. Yeah. Because like you say, I... I, I play... Oath Mark as a fun game, not a competitive game. I like to have a beer I... and, a, and have a laugh. It can be competitive, don't get me wrong, but it's... Oh, the the rules are tight enough for it to be... Yeah, and oh, I think no, totally, you, totally. The idea that well, there was a prize for the person who, yeah, who took the most objectives and killed the most stuff, that's, yeah, fair. I think that's right. You've got some good... There was uh, one of the guys I played oh, was a really right. good player. Um, and, uh, yeah, you've got to keep... You got, It's hard because... You definitely need to keep some sort of competitiveness to a, a game, else there's no point. It's not a game. And if, not if necessarily true, because I think you get like Ark World. I think you you want to you want to win or lose, but sometimes if you play an Ark World, which is the the most narrative game I can think of, mm-hmm. um, because you have the the feat system where you decide amongst yourselves, like you know, with both players, oh, I'm going to push a tree or I'm going to throw a frog at you or something. Any anything you can think of, it all just becomes role playing. Yeah. And I think well, I've, it, lost, it, it, I've lost yeah. games at that, well, not on purpose, but because it was narratively correct and funny. Yeah, sure, sure. So no, the, the dice can, are making I the get... decisions for me, but the narrative yeah. that we build around it, and you just some. I mean, there must have been times. Doing that. There must have been times where you've done a you've done a charge because you think that's it wasn't necessarily oh, the best tactical well, tactical option, well, but it yeah. was. I, it's funny. I mean, I love it with my goblins just throwing them in who cares you know because yeah you, you're it's thinking just, narratively you, yeah that, that's what they would do isn't it they just run well they probably try and hide but but i think you can i mean D for instance isn't it's a game it's a good fun you know a lot of people enjoy it but that yeah. doesn't have a uh, that thing so i think the closer you get to that the less winning becomes important but no i think Oathmark <laughs> is a is a, a fine balance of a nice fairly crunchy game mm-hmm. with um Good narrative elements. Yeah, uh, we've completely no, gone off target, off um, off topic. That's a, that's okay. That's okay. It's um, it, it's kind of on. It, well, no, we're not. <laughs> so yeah. So I uh, so you so kind toy, of touched on this. Is, that is that is a toy army is terrible. Um, I'm sorry if you stick up for them and call me a snob, but no, I hate them. Terrible. Don't do it. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna go to the other ones I've written down for the bad sides of yeah sure. for these super creative armies. And I think sometimes, I think we touched on this earlier, that the, the studio schemes for whatever game have been thought up by someone who is, you know, an artist. It is their job yep. to think these up, to think what works. And I think yep. sometimes you can do these, you see these themed armies, and as a as an individual model, they might look great, but as an army, they might look a bit of a mess. I think sometimes it's not, you know... You might have had a great time playing them. The models might look, might look great individually, but you end up with something that doesn't seem very yeah. It's that cohesive. Sort of, like, yeah, it's that sort of um, you know, they've tried they've tried hard to make a uh, unique army, but the, all the colours are are wrong for whatever reason. Uh, and yeah, and it just looks messy. And I, I'm with you. I'm with you. It just it can just doesn't sit right in the eye. Whereas if if the same yeah. uh, person just did yeah. just did it the so, box art way, so you know the they might have ended up with something. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely using the same painting technique. Um, you know whether they're good or bad, but going with something that's already been created for them, suddenly that army could look really um, cohesive. 
Yeah. And, but I think nice. yeah, that's definitely. not necessarily a bad thing, though, because we do this hobby for varying reasons, like we said. So, yeah. you know, if oh, you're happy with the army and you play it and you, you enjoyed putting it together, yeah, that's, power, that's, power to you, power that, to you. That is the key, isn't it? It's just to enjoy what you're doing. I mean, look, we're, we're, we're simply surmising, we're simply chatting about it, but yeah, at the end of the day, it's all about what you enjoy doing. If you enjoy painting or slapping a load of, uh, you know, just black on your models and that's it, you know, go for it whatever that's fine yeah um i doesn't mean doesn't mean that you know i'm gonna like it or, ghost or ghost armies else. i think sometimes fall foul of this oh. i've seen them done for tournaments people you can knock out knock out a ghost army fairly quickly a few layers of dry brushing in a uh, day and i think although they do technically look cohesive which entire armies light green or light blue or something but mm. um i don't think it looks very impressive on a tabletop uh it's very thematic but same with like some skeleton armies sometimes where you just oh yeah that it's a bunch of yeah. skeletons yeah yeah uh, <laughs> dry brush bone yeah um so yeah so it's it's not necessarily a huge bad thing it's just a uh, a it's more challenging to make it look good because someone hasn't already planned that for you and yeah. b uh yeah depends what your theme no, is I, I, I would agree i would agree it's it, it can it's one of those it can be a uh, an odd thing to look at and i think uh, the last downside i was going to go for was yeah. if you if you've got an amazing theme and you really want to sort of run with it um but you use too many proxies um so i'm using um some ents some sort of ogre sized ents as ogres uh in oathmark and i don't think that's too bad because a there's only one unit of them and i go they're ogres they're humanoid. They're on, you know, fifty mil bases. You, you know what they are, mm -hmm. and there isn't a such thing as Ents in Oathmark. So you, you know, they're not Ents, for instance. Yeah. Sure. So there's limited confusion. But I think I've played against people uh, with like Warhammer Fantasy and a couple of other thick bits and pieces. And Kings of War is terrible for it, where you've got something on a base and you go, "What's that?" And it's not. I've had to ask people multiple times in a game, so which one's that unit again? And yeah. what's that unit again? And you go, you know, it might be a cool theme, but if I can't tell the difference between your... Yeah. Um, and I, I think that's a problem, actually. Only, only found in sci-fi and fantasy, because you don't get that in historical. No. And I think you, you don't know, you really know, get it in you much know, in sci-fi. I think it's a, it's a fantasy problem, I think. Because, fantasy trait, yeah. Yeah, um, especially in historical, you can't do that because it's just not that unit then. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think proxies, I'm not got anything against proxies as a general rule, but I think if it gets in the way, if at any point it gets in the way of playing a game, I don't mm. like it. And I actually took ogre models to the uh, the game. Uh, just in case. Just in case. And if someone said, you know, oh, you know, they, they don't look much like ogres, I'd be like, do you know what? I've got some ogres. Yeah. Out, out of interest, is why do you use the ensign? Is it because it themes well with your army because rather that, than? Yeah, my army didn't feel that themed actually because it was just some halfling humans and some trees. But well, they are head, themed it... in a, they're themed in a sense of color though, aren't they? Yeah, they're all green and yellow. Yeah, and, and sort of earthy tones and stuff. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I, I yeah I liked using the ents. I thought they were cool. Um, and yeah, I said I have a I have a theme in my head about how the army, the background of that army and where they're from and and all that sort of stuff so i yeah for me the tree men fit better than the ogres thematically and uh cool. wise but i could understand you know but i don't think as i said with earth it's that confusing and i said i like a proxy here and there i mean uh, it, say you say it's a giant yeah. if it's if it's if someone if someone's got a giant but it looks it's um a giant squid you know the, the cracker model from bones or something but it's still you know 15 centimeters tall it's on the right base and one at the one time at the beginning of the game i go well, what is that and they go that is a giant i'll be like yes it is yeah that's a giant yeah sure sure and I, you know I, what I, rules I, to apply to it but if yeah, yeah. if you've got I, I think more when it sort of comes down to infantry units and sort of solo things and you just you i think it's courtesy that you that these armies are readable i mean i think this is a really interesting topic anyway i think maybe um proxies may could 
could be its own conversation. Mm, but um, I mean, in historical, could uh, I don't know if this ever ever happens, but like if you use the wrong model or you say do people do that? They go, oh, these well, I said, this uh, what, unit what, what, this unit are actually what, the elites. Yeah, but I'm I just using the regular models. Yeah, tell you, that's probably what happens more in in historical. Say, say you're playing Napoleonics. Uh, someone might say, um, "Look, I've got this this line unit of British. They are actually, yeah, they you know they they've got this flag, but they're actually going to be this unit rather than that the unit of the flag they've got." Yeah, I don't know if you've keep... got different arms because it's pretty much all muskets, isn't it? But yeah, you know, exactly. oh, they, so, they look like they've got muskets, but they've actually got pikes. Uh, sure, I mean, I don't know. I mean. I, I definitely would be more i think it'd be more like you know because say say you're playing napoleonics you have quite often you've got flags that donate uh, uh no notate what regiment they are right you know and if if you're playing a historical game where you've got certain regiments at the battle you might not have a, have one regiment for whatever reason because you just didn't have that flag so you might have an, a, a proxy regiment. Would that change the, the rules or? No, I don't no, think so. It's more just them thematically accurate. Yeah, it's just yeah, it's yeah. just not. I'm just trying to think. Not, uh, what? It's just not the same regiment that that was actually there at the battle. Yeah, but that you know, and I think most people wouldn't care about that at all. Some people probably would, but. But I'm thinking more. Say you were playing uh, like a Dark Ages game. Yeah. And you'd be yeah, and you were like, as I say, you'd be. Those are. Which units have got pikes and which units have got spears? Sometimes that's really yeah, obvious. Sometimes sure. it's not. Or you've done sure. like you've done a themed Roman army, but like you can't tell the difference between the legionaries and the the word begin with C that I can't like centuriari or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. The um, well, actually, probably yeah. But anyway, yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah, uh, yeah. I just I think, and that can yeah. If you put too much of a theme in, can be it can be confusing for your opponent. I think you have a beautiful army and you go that's great but actually do i want to play against it i don't know what any of that is yeah and i don't have time yeah. to learn uh you know you, you know what it is because you built it but i don't have to i've you know we've got three hours right now to play a game i want to be able to look at a unit and go right i have a rough idea what they are and what they're doing mm. so i quite like WYSIWYG in that thing i think you can still do a hugely themed army and keep everything 100 percent uh WYSIWYG. I've seen the way it's not been done, and yeah, uh, can be a bit more confusing. And I think that's yeah. the main sort of points covered. Then really, so yeah, it can. Yeah, I think so. It can can be less clear. Yeah, it can not be if you don't so, pull it so, off. But I think yeah, I think. What about that then, James? What what's your roundup suggest comments on it all? Um, well, what's your conclusion on it. As I love to to fence it on these things, I think the the trick for me personally, anyway. Is to go down the center so my old ogre army that was all chaos ogres um you could tell the difference between the the armored i'm trying to think what they were called iron breakers or whatever no that's not yeah. right you know the big guys with big 200 weapons and loads of armor because i gave them big yeah. 200 weapons and loads of armor loads of other random tat on there but you know you saw you could see what they were the yeah. army had a strong theme everything was clear concise mm -hmm. people wouldn't have to ask me what any of my units were my Elfmark army, you know, I've got a couple of substitutions. My giants, my new giant is probably going to be uh, Treebeard, the uh, Lord of the Rings Games Workshop kit that came out fairly recently. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because I saw some really nice ones, so that's going to be my giant. But no one, once again, there isn't a rule for an Ent, and someone's going to look at that one thing and be like, what's that giant? I mean, there are other things it could be, I guess. It could be like a living statue or... Something like that, but still. It's, I think people would say it's a giant, yeah. Yeah, you, sure. It's gonna stay clear. So I think I think it's the, the the trick for me is to I like a themed army. I think they look fantastic. If someone's put that work in and I think that freedom and conversions and having something completely unique, it's a joy to face down the table. But I'd rather have something clear and concise that I recognise than something too mad. Yeah. So I think no, the trick totally is, to, is to keep it down the uh, keep it down the center. Keep within the theme of the game as well. I reckon if yeah. if it's Oathmark, keep it Dark Agesy. If it's I don't know, yeah. If it's conflict, Both. say 
keep it yeah. keep it diesel punk don't go too sci-fi or something like that sure, I, sure. Try yeah, yeah, yeah. stick yeah. it within the theme of the game and I'll and yeah. I'll be really impressed with what you've come up with yeah um, I'd agree I mean look uh, for me I've always painted by um, as a rule sort of follow the box art generally as a rule yeah you know through through whether I'm pay, painting historicals or whether I'm painting some space marines um, I've always sort of liked I like I like the uh, the law behind games. I like to try and mimic that law, um, and you know I enjoy doing that. I, f- I personally find coming up with my own law. It's, it's not stressful, but just a bit hard work. So that so that makes it a little bit harder then to start doing more of my own themed yeah. armies, which I've never I never really do. You know. Maybe the closest would be sort of goblins and stuff, but that really, they're not. Not it's very little you can do with goblins, I suppose. At the end of the day, so yeah, for me, I've always really painted by numbers, and I, and I enjoy doing it. What would you like to face, though? Oh, I, I always appreciate, I always appreciate a well thought out army. As someone who's spent the time, who's been able, like I say, for me, I don't, I don't, I find myself not, I don't have the hobby time to curate my own army mm-hmm. in its in its entirety um where, for whatever reason that might be uh, but don't get me wrong i i can most certainly appreciate someone who's done that and so if i'm fighting some if i'm playing against someone who's who spent the time to um dramatize you know dioramatize or or just simply come up with a cracking paint job it which is completely slightly you know a bit of a curveball oh i totally that's i love that i love see i love seeing it yeah. and then that, but in in turn that gives me um some inspiration to try different things because i see what they've done I'm like, oh god yeah i'd love to do that so but for myself in my own way i i hobby i tend to more or less paint my numbers i like to keep it i like to keep it fairly simple i suppose but like we was mentioning earlier what i find interesting is how do i get to that point how do i how do i paint the miniature to get to that that point so it's more about how it's more about the painting skills rather than my um just raw creativity yeah yeah exactly my, rather my design skills and how i'm going to yeah. create that army yeah you know so yeah no it's 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 interesting it's really interesting it's a it's a, it's a nice nice topic um yeah, I've enjoyed talking about it actually. Yeah, and as okay. ever, if yeah, if you go, it's got some thoughts, um, stick them in the comments. Yeah. We'd love to hear them. Um, Please do because what, what, I think there's a what lot. Do you of, guys, is there any say. game? Is there anything you'd be annoyed to face? Yeah. Uh, what do you prefer, and what do you prefer doing yourselves? Yeah. Um, yeah. And definitely. What just your your thoughts on the topic? That'd be fantastic. Please do. Um, um, so and, and as I said, this topic was suggested to us by Adventure Mr. H on uh, the Scruffy Crow Discord. Uh, I'll stick a link to the Scruffy Crow Discord if that's all right in the uh, on the YouTube yeah, of this. Uh, feel free to jump on and uh, and chat with us on there. Yeah, definitely. And let us know definitely. what you think. Um, and we will always take more. If you've got to come up with a good idea for a topic, let us know because uh, yeah, open to suggestions. So James, that brings us to recommendation of the week. It certainly does. <laughs> um, recommendation of this week. This week, uh, back to my turn again. Um, and actually, someone messaged me earlier today and asked me what tufts do I use. So I've talked about my with my army a lot uh, this episode, and one of the things I think. Has sort of tied them together quite well is the the basing scheme i've done which uses three different types of tufts uh sort of a i think it's a four mil a six mil and a, and a bushy one um and i have i've had mixed luck with tufts in the past uh, oh flowers as well i think that's one of the things that makes my bases look quite good i've got them yellow and white flowers um and i ran out of flowers a while back and I needed to find some more. I ended up buying a few that I didn't like. Um, so yeah, my recommendation is Warpainter Scenics uh, that you can find at warpainter.net. There'll be a link in the description. 
and they just make a really they, they, they don't do a lot they've got a, just a tidy range of just lovely tufts and um and grasses flowers little bushes all just that sort of stuff and i will keep going back to them now they've got my brand loyalty uh because they're tufts they've got a really nice glue on the back it's not too squidgy like some of the stuff i've had from serious play uh which i didn't like and it's not too sometimes it's not sticky enough i end up just having to glue them down anyway um i always used to glue tufts down in fact despite whether they're self-adhesive or not the ones from war painter i've got full confidence that once they are down they're staying i've not had one fall off yet um nice. and yeah the, the the ones i use are the rough grass as well which have got like two or three different colors of of grass in them so they look quite nice and natural and they're quite puffy i don't know what the word full luxurious yeah uh, and I'm the flowers are really yeah. nice the flowers are a bit less realistic maybe than some i've seen out there um i mean they're just little yellow flock on top of some grass tufts really uh but just the shape i think the way they look on the bases is is the best flowers that i've bought and i've bought a bunch of just random stuff off ebay so yeah, Wall Painter's got some sells all a lot of the stuff on eBay, but yeah, check out his uh, check out the website. Um, okay. Some some really nice quality, um, and it's a decent price as well, um, which is a big concern for me most of the time. So good. All right then, perfect, James. So there you go, guys. If you're looking for tufts or scenic items, uh, head over to www.wallpainter.net. They seem to be the place to go. I'm going to try them myself, actually, so I have run out of tough. So thanks for that, James. Yeah. So that brings us to the end of this episode. Thank you very much for taking the time to listen up to, about us waffle on. Well, what is it? Painting and not painting, I suppose. Just hobby. Hobby in general. I think that's what, that's this, that's what this channel's about, isn't it? Um, yeah. What we get distracted by, I think, is the point of the channel. So, yeah. Uh, no, it was good to 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 get some of this off <laughs> off my chest then we get on natter again um as i've already mentioned a hundred times let us know what you thought give us your ideas um it's probably the wrong time in the podcast to mention this but we're on soundcloud now so i'll probably be putting this on soundcloud as well if so if you want to watch future episodes go and check out our soundcloud thing go and give our old episodes a play just so it looks like someone's listening to them um yeah and uh don't forget to hit that subscribe button oh yeah and the bell button give us a subscribe and a bell yeah and uh, yeah, thanks for listening. And Thank I'll you. see you next week. Still alive. Catch you later, guys. Bye.